You are about to meet an outstanding group of individuals. These eight African American musicians have come together from across the United States to form the Young Eight, a critically acclaimed chamber ensemble. Founded and led by Quentin I. Morris, they have unified with a common goal, to expose various communities to the arts through classical music. Founded in 2002 at the North Carolina School of the Arts, the members hail from the Boston Conservatory, Cleveland Institute of Music, Indiana University, the Juilliard School, Manhattan School of Music, Mann's College of Music, the New England Conservatory of Music, and Peabody Conservatory of Music. The octet has established itself as one of the next generation's most dynamic and energetic classical music ensembles. They have won numerous awards and have performed in New York City, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Miami, Seattle, and Austin. They reach out to various communities through performance, residencies, and youth outreach programs. How did the group get started? What are they doing now? And what are their plans for the future? Join us as we get to know the Young Eight, both on stage and off. First, let's meet the players. Quinton I. Morris, violin, director and founder of the Young Eight. Mariana Green Hill, violin, fundraising chairperson of the Young Eight. Kenneth Jarvis, violin, dean of admissions for the Young Eight String Seminar. John H. Littlejohn, violin, newest member of the Young Eight. Christopher Jenkins, viola, chairman for the Young Eight Composers Competition. Don Michelle Smith, Viola, Education Outreach Coordinator for the Young Eight. Ryan Murphy, Cello, Facilities Manager for the Young Eight. Tahira Whittington, Cello, Artistic Advisor for the Young Eight. When I was at the North Carolina School of the Arts, I developed the idea of starting this group. You know, it, it didn't start out as an octet, it didn't even start out as a quartet. Um, I just wanted to be able to gather a group of musicians together um, of African American descent and um, form a group that would play chamber music concerts. Mm -hmm. But the idea came when I was actually visiting uh, one of my colleagues, Tahira Whittington. I was visiting her in New York City and I was complaining to her about how I thought it was a shame that um, what little African-American string players were out there, we hardly ever saw each other, and we didn't have a venue where we could come together and play and collaborate as musicians. And after leaving her house and flying back to North Carolina, I remember being on the plane and just being bothered by it and saying, you know, I need to fix this problem. I need to create some sort of venue where black string players can get together and play music. How am I going to do that? So you got, how, how did you and Quentin get to know each other? We got to know each other through a music festival. We attended Gateway's Music Festival uh, that uh, is located in Rochester, New York, uh, hosted by the Eastman Music School. And I didn't really know him. <laughs> at all. He approached me, I think he had heard me play somewhere, and he approached me as if he knew me very well. Um, he said, oh, he's like, hey girl, how you doing? Oh, da -da. <laughs> and I was just like, who is this person? I don't recall meeting him. But I was just like, he was so nice um, and, and very friendly. I was just like, maybe I did meet him. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of questioned myself. Um, and we just formed a rapport with one another and and uh, immediately got on well with one another. And th the next thing I knew, he was uh, auditioning for masters and had asked me if I c he could stay with me mm -hmm. um, at my apartment and uh, while he was auditioning for a master's degree program. And I said, sure, come, you know, my home is your home. It was, I had actually moved. Um, that was my first apartment and I had recently moved and he was my first, very first guest 
So, um, and he pretty much uh, <laughs> helped me kind of have my own house warming because <laughs> I, I never did. And uh, so he kind of opened the door for more people to uh, visit. And I think I, I, I really did get an apartment to live on my own. But since then, I, so you <laughs> I've guys been really opening have, it up you, to... You guys are friends, right? Yeah, yeah we are best friends. Uh -huh. We are best friends. Um, our relationship has definitely grown over the years. And we are each other's confidants. You know, we come to each other, you know, even outside of the group, we come to each other for just uh, spiritual growth, um, for relationship, you know, just talking through things. Um, and, um, it, it's been, it's been really great. Um, uh, all of the people in the young eight have influenced one another in, in their lives outside of music. And I, I think that's what makes this group such a genuine, a genuinely authentic group as far as the people are concerned. How long have you been involved with the young eight? Uh, since the beginning, uh, since Quentin started it. Four years ago. Okay. So I was one of the founding members as well as Tahira with the group. And it's been it's been such a great experience since the beginning. Um, you know, we originally started as just some friends coming together and then it's grown into a nonprofit group uh, where we're reaching out to other communities and doing our own um, our own programs where we're having students to come and study with us. So it's really grown over the years. Let's uh, talk a little bit about your history with the Young Eight. Uh, how long have you been with the group? Well, I'm the newest member of the Octet. Uh, I've been with them since last September. Um, yeah, I auditioned for the group and was selected. Were, was it a situation where you were kind of aware of the group or they were sort of actively looking for someone? Was it a little bit of both? Um, both. They, they had an opening um, for a, violin, a violinist and so they sent out an email and a posting for a job opening and uh, I came and took the audition in uh -huh. New York. So, Congratulations. Thank how, you. how has it been your first uh, six or eight months with the group? Is it uh, more than you had ever dreamed of or <laughs> well, how has it been treating you? It's been great. Um, it's, you know, it's a really, it's a new experience and I've really learned a lot about both sides of music, the business side and also working and living with, you know, a group of people that you're friends with as well as musical colleagues. Uh, mm -hmm. of. So, I mean, uh, this is the tour that this tour the, that we're doing this summer. This is the first time uh, I've done this sort of thing with a chamber group, so this is very new for me. Up until now, it's been mostly the business side that I've been helping with and learning and working on. So it's a, it's a new experience, but a very good one. Now, how did you go about, I, I imagine you probably knew some of the people that right. you, you had people in mind. How did you approach other people and they thought, wow, that's really a great idea. I'd love to be involved, sign me up. Mm -hmm. Because that's, the, that's people exactly. are, the people in your group are from all over the United States. Right. So where did you come together? How did you meet these other people? Some of them I knew. I knew actually the four founding members, or three founding members besides myself, Tahir Whittington, Mariana Greenhill, and Kenneth Jarvis, all whom I had known through music festivals. Mm -hmm. And um, Tahira and Mariana knew other people and they invited them into the group as well. And so that's kind of how it started out, was definitely on a friendship basis of, of people who are really talented and saying, and I, I remember saying to Mariana, well, hey, I don't know any you know, black violas, do you know any? And she said, oh yeah, I know some. And um, that's how the ball kind of got okay. rolling. Okay, how long have you been in the group? I've been in the group for two years now, actually. It'll be just two years in the fall. So, and how long have you been with the group, Ryan? Um, this is my second season with the group. And how long have you been a member of the group? Um, this is my second summer with uh -huh. the group. So, one of the newer members. Are you the youngest member of the group? I am the youngest. Okay. Tell me about a little bit of the like the the prime directive, if, so to speak. You know, the young eight. Our our primary goal is to fill in the blank. For me, um, and I think a lot of the other members would feel the same thing. We even though we do concerts, I think what we mostly get from being a part of the young eight is the experience of seeing what effect that we have on other people, and whether this is you know them seeing us for the first time 
are seeing a classical music performance for the first time, that effect is something that is so inspiring to us to actually hear that from our audience members or hear this from you know a young kid who's never never seen a classical music performance. What did you think of the show? It was great. Yeah? What piece did you like the best? Um, I would say the second song. The second one? What did you like about it? It had wild energy. Yeah? Big, uh, big exciting, sound. Huh? Big sound. I yeah. like big sound. Now, um, your experience as a young person and being in an inner city educational system, now you're, you're involved with private lessons through the Enterprise Foundation Music Program. Was your experiences and the, the influences that you received as a child, did that kind of push you in this direction and, and you're sort of giving back to the system? Is, could you tell yes, me a little no, about very, that? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Um, it's, I took what I knew happened with me and, you know, I. I thought to myself, there are a lot of kids, you know, in who just don't have the funds to play a classical instrument because of the, you know, you pay for the private lessons, the instruments are expensive, the summer camps are expensive, you know, the or even to play in new symphonies, it's just a very expensive thing. And uh, if they don't have, you know, necessarily a parent pushing them or someone that can nurture that talent, you know, it's lost. And so I said, if I didn't have people who recognized something in me and started to give me the opportunity to play and started to you know, give me the things that I needed to play, like instruments and, and help in that way, uh, I would have never known that I had talent or had anything to offer in the field of music, you know, especially classical music. And so I thought, you know, talent is, is everywhere. And in inner city communities where kids don't have an opportunity, if we can somehow go out in there and, and figure out you know, which kids really take to it and, you know, and just need the tools to get that inner uh, music out. Well, what drew me to this group was, I think, the fact that they really make a, a, a good effort to reach people who don't have the exposure to classical music that people like me had, you know, growing up with a mother who played violin and growing up, you know, even with a father who really appreciated classical music and enjoyed listening to it, you know, classical music was pretty much what I listened to right up until high school. And so it was just a part of my life and just to bring such a big part of my life to other people who don't normally get to see it or find it maybe somewhat inaccessible with you know all the stereotypes that come with classical music it's just it's a great joy to do that and also the string seminar program which i think is the highlight of the summer for me to just to teach and you know educate kids not only about music but about dedication and hard work and you know what it means to be not only a musician but a success in anything you do and i think we bring that uh as the main focus. Well, we get together as far as uh, programming concerts for our string seminar that's going to be happening at the end of this month um, in Austin, Texas on the campus of Houston Tillotson College. Uh, we have from 8 to 16 young string players coming to uh, join us in an intensive week of chamber coachings, uh, chamber music coachings, where they're playing with us um, private lessons, uh, chamber orchestra, professionalism seminars, outreach programs. So they're going to get a workout. An immersion. Huh? Oh, yes. Immersion. <laughs> they probably never worked as hard uh -huh. as we're going to work them. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the residencies that I particularly like is one that I run. Um, it's, it's part of our string seminar that we incorporate at the, um, where we have students come and study with us. This is called a movement class. And it, it talks about being aware of your body as a musician and the importance of that when you're not only when you're playing but when you're interacting with other musicians and so we deal with a lot of activities of um, moving your body um, trust trusting others to um, help you move your body and the importance of those um, those activities is a lot of fun. The mm -hmm. kids really have a great so time. So the, the residencies are a lot of the kids already musicians, or or is this maybe something they're being exposed to for the first time? It's a combination of both. That one in particular, I've done mostly with people that have been studying um, instruments for a while. We have other ones where uh, we do various games like uh, music bingo, where we kind of edu do a little bit of educating like what's music all about. Um, there's opportunities where we uh, incorporate. Uh, not just classical music, but hip-hop music, 
uh, maybe some jazz music that students can hear that, oh, um, this is actually a Mary J. Blige, Blige song that we're playing. Um, and it happens to be string instruments playing the sa song. Mm -hmm. Or we have kids come up and they can conduct us uh, and we do various things where we play really soft and they have to conduct really small or um, you know, they make really big gestures and we play really loud. And so it's a lot of fun, we get them involved. Well, the, the book is the most amazing um, experience that I've had in my life thus far, uh, besides being married, of course. Um, and I just, I love each member of the group so much that they're basically part of my family. Like, they're all siblings to me. Um, so it's just an amazing experience every day working with them, living with them. We become like siblings, truly. You know, we bicker like siblings. We, um, I think I saw a little bit of that this <laughs> afternoon. Right, we bicker like siblings, but we also love each other very, very much. And we support each other highly. So, um, along with the music comes respect and, you know, the rivalries and, you know, a little bit of everything. But it's just, I mean, Without this experience, I don't know what I would be doing right now. We, we definitely consider each other friends. In a group this large, I mean, the bonds aren't going to be equally strong between all members. So we definitely go to rehearsal and everyone, well, everyone tends to get along. I mean, you're, you're never going to have a completely argument-free session, you know, a period like this for four weeks. But it's kind of, it's good when things like that happen. There's conflict because it means you're actually making something people sure. feel strongly about what you're doing. And that's really important. Um, and I think we we actually do try to spend a good deal of time together as a group, going out to eat, um, things like that. And usually, through moments of, uh, of stress, I think we really bond. Like yesterday, we had to uh, we had a whole bunch of concerts and interviews all over the city, and uh, with five of the others, I had to ride the bus pretty much all all day. And it was trying, you know, it was tough. We didn't know where we were going. We were getting lost, getting on the wrong bus, going the wrong way, things like this that were kind of unavoidable. And I think through this this process and all this stress, I feel like we really bonded. The seven, my seven colleagues, we are all very, very different. And not only just the way we approach the instrument or how we perform on stage, but just as individuals, we're, we're very different. And I think that's what makes us really unique. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a musical gumbo, you know? You just have all these different flavors. Everything tastes really, really good, but it's very different. Mm -hmm. Now, as, as, a, as the group leader, you must assume sort of somebody has to be sort of the acting music director, but it sounds like you really take a lot of input in from all of the other different musical styles that are, are you know, throwing out ideas and hey, well, you know, why don't we try playing this phrase this way or maybe, right. you know, that kind of thing. Is the group kind of pretty democratic in that regard? Do you, do you listen to each other and bounce each other's ideas off each other and kind of work things out as a group? Yes, we do. I mean, I, I'm serving as the artistic director, the artistic and executive director, but everyone um, definitely puts their two cents in. Um, one thing that helped us in the violin section on starting to get this together was to really actually lean into the person playing it next, I actually kind of pass it along and, and actually lean in with him and take it from him. Don, lean into Ryan and take it from him, then lean to Chris. Chris, take it from Don, then lean to Q, you know, you can appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, sure. Changes. Sure. Gotcha. I saw her. I saw. I saw to hear it. I didn't see it. I didn't want to get started out of the room. That's gonna go. It's not. Just try it. Just try it. It actually helps a lot. Eight notes.
you can't be all up. You're looking at me for the eight notes? Yeah. We just said that the that the seven <laughs> violins have a solo there, so were you paying attention? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we were looking over there and we were out loud. I, I, I was actually were projecting my sound. Okay, okay. I know you were. <laughs> you weren't communicating what yeah. we needed to. I had four years, I was writing four four years. Uh, right. Awesome. I know. I don't think I'll come in. Can you just play you, Kenneth, for a second? Yeah. So I can hear you. See, that's, I didn't really feel this. I feel like this is a section that just yeah. stops. 